we did our finale walk and got off the runway, we all started crying backstage, yeah. like group hug. And I've never felt that from a runway show before. Yes, yeah. like my eyes are gonna start watering, yeah. but I'm tough. <laughs> I got it, I'm not gonna let my mascara run. It's not gonna happen. Hi everyone, and welcome to a brand new Face It episode with me, Tracy P. This is a show where I do makeup tutorials with a side order of lifestyle advice. Every week I invite some pretty amazing people to sit in my makeup chair. We chat, we laugh, we sing, and sometimes we even cry, but we never let our mascara run. You are going to love today's guest, but before I introduce her, I want to remind you to subscribe, hit the like button, and comment below because we want to hear from you. Okay. Nice it. So today's guest is the lovely Leslie Hampton. <laughs> she is a fashion designer and her namesake line. It's all about size inclusivity and flipping stereotypes on their head and celebrating her indigenous culture. We know each other through Instagram <laughs> and I met you a couple of times and I've, I've featured some of your pieces in some of my plus size fashion segments so I appreciate that. She has beautiful pieces, go check them out. So today what I'm gonna be talking about is how to do a smoky eye. I'm not gonna be giving you the whole blown out Kim Kardashian <laughs> smoky eye. I want this to be something that everybody can do. So it's gonna be very, very simple, pared down. Let's get ready. Perfect. Okay, so the key to a pared down smoky eye is just go with like a jumbo type of uh, pencil like mm. this. You're gonna do like one line across the base of your eyelash line and then you're just gonna smoke it up. Mm. People think that they have to put black all over their eyelid. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Yeah. And what I love about this crayon is that it's soft, which mm. means once I draw it on, I can move it where I wanna move Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's the whole point mm -hmm. of this one. It's kinda not meant to stay in place, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of eyeshadow and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to brush it upwards. Can't wait to see it. Honestly, for a smoky eye, the key is blending. Mm. If you don't blend, <laughs> that's where you're gonna get those raccoon eyes. It's not a good look. We're not going for that. We want it to be soft. You want it to have this gradual blend of color going upwards. So Leslie, what is your relationship to makeup and beauty? I love these days being experimental with my makeup. I guess my face has been covered for so long with face masks that whenever I can do a bold lip or something like that, I really love that. Yeah, I always say, it's just makeup, it comes off. Guys, exactly. like, experiment, have fun. Like, yes, I'm allowed to show my lips boldest clown color mm -hmm. I can find. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. Well, I've, I kind of been doing that before. The <laughs> so when it comes to representation in the beauty industry, mm. Do you feel that you're representing? Do you feel that that's changing at all? I think it's definitely changing. Similar to fashion, it's a, it's a slow time coming, but I, I definitely see a shift these days. Um, and it's so exciting to watch and, and be a part of as well. Representation is a form of harm reduction. And if you can see yourself represented in all these incredible spaces, um, like beauty, like fashion, then you, you have that next level of confidence and, and then who knows what you can do from there. It's, you believe so. you can do anything, exactly. right? Like, but I think people who are so used to seeing their image reflected back to them, they don't understand why it's so important for us to see it and what a big deal it was when we did yeah. see it. I remember when I was a teenager and Naomi Campbell became a thing. Mm. That was a big deal for me because mm -hmm. like all supermodels were not darker skinned. I was like, exactly. oh my God, she's considered beautiful and she's accepted by the masses and she's my color. Mm -hmm. Like, I never saw myself represented and never mind saw anybody who was plus size. Yeah, and beyond just a token as well. Exactly. And beyond that linear storyline of, oh, if you're a plus size person, then your storyline in a TV show is just about weight loss or, or something along. Or you're the that funny, to do with it. you're the funny exactly. person. That's why I just, I just feel it's so important to show different facets of different races, different yes. colors, different sizes. Yes. I've seen your fashion shows and they are all about inclusivity. Like you're seeing people come out that are not normally associated with beauty and fashion yeah. and you're putting them out there and they look great. Exactly. And you're just like, why am I so, surprised at this and right. so it's so jarring because we don't see it. That's why I do the plus size segments and stuff like that because I want to get to the point where it is not such a big deal to yes, see exactly. different types of bodies. One woman wrote me saying, 
I, it made me cry. I'm almost going to cry, but I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm tough. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but like she wrote me saying, mm. the first time she saw one of my segments, she sat on her couch and she cried because for the first time she ever saw somebody who looked like her in a fashion segment on TV. Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> I was reading the letter and I was like, I, I started tearing up because I know what that feels like. Yeah, I have an exact same story where we casted um, all mental health advocates for a runway. So it didn't matter your waist size, it was more about your, your inner strength and, and wanting to celebrate that. So we had a wide range of models, again, different backgrounds, different sizes, different heights. We did our finale walk and got off the runway. We all started crying backstage, yeah. like group hug. And I've never felt that from a runway show before yeah. because people finally they felt, felt included. They finally felt, included. felt represented. Yes. Yeah. Okay, next question. <laughs> I was trying, I was like, uh-uh, my eyes are not doing it. I go, I'm not gonna do it. I was looking at you, I was like, oh, it was, getting it glossy. was getting there. I was like, I'm getting glossy, it's not gonna happen. I got it, I'm not gonna let my mascara run. It's not gonna happen. Your eye's not complete without mascara. Mm -hmm. You have to do yeah, mascara. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna put a little mascara on. And I always say, just like wiggle from the base, your way up like this. I mean, everybody knows how to put on mascara, but still I see people doing it wrong and I see people <laughs> blinking into the mascara, that drives mm -hmm. me nuts, don't do that. It's not doing anything, you're just getting the tips of the lashes, so you wanna start at the base and wiggle up. Yeah. So Leslie, what's it like to have your stuff in Vogue magazine? and on celebrities, and I saw Lizzo yeah. <laughs> on the treadmill and your stuff, like what's that like? It is a lot of screaming at my phone when I see it for the first time or screaming at the TV. Um, watching Devry Jacobs present at the Emmys wearing our work it was just such a major moment for indigenous fashion and to be a part of that was so huge. And then again with the Lizzo item. I'm doing this for all the big girls out there. They said we couldn't do it. And the fact that it was during quarantine and she chose to be in that work, it wasn't like a publicity stunt or anything like yeah. that. It was just, she felt comfortable in these clothes enough to work out and, and sing while working out. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, yes, Leslie, <laughs> she's wearing your stuff. That is so amazing. Yeah. Do you have anybody who's like a wish list person where you're like, <laughs> one day I just really, really want to get this person, oh. like anybody, just like, this could be your chance. Like, yeah. <laughs> It changes almost every day. I'd, re I'd really love to dress Meghan Markle, okay, um, Demi yes. Lovato. I think anyone, it can happen. Anyone who has happen. that support and and that incredible story and, and their their voice is is loud and proud. That those are the people that I that I want to dress. Well, you know what? It's gonna happen if your stuff gets on Meghan Markle or Demi Lovato. I'm taking half credit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Call me. I mean, she said it here on Face It First. Even though I have nothing to do with anything, I'm still gonna take credit. We'd be like, I was there. I was there. So Leslie, how do you weave your Indigenous culture into your work? Mm -hmm. I make Indigenous fashion because I am Indigenous. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, that that is why. It's it's very much a reconnection story for me and defining my indigeneity for myself because it is very particular to each individual and there's been so many avenues of, of ways that either the government or media really try to narrow the concept of Indigenous people down and it's such a struggle to be able to define your indigeneity for yourself with this with this landscape but if I can create this brand and empower the next generation of Indigenous youth to really come into their voice and their power that's that's really what I hope to achieve. Leslie we covered so much so lastly, what I want to ask you is, what advice would you give to any young Indigenous designers? Yeah, I think the future of Indigenous fashion is so exciting, and the future of Indigenous creators is so exciting. Um, seeing a bunch of Indigenous TikTokers or, or social media stars really come into their own and find their voice with social media, through fashion, through beauty, through art, and, and through reconnecting um, is just, so exciting that I think we're really at like a, a precipice point where 2022 and beyond is just gonna be so incredible to hear these authentic stories right from indigenous people and to help everybody kind of learn and discover the beauty that is indigenous people and to really push forward for that change that we really need to see in, in, in all these industries. 
Okay, so I am done the smoky eye. You can zoom in for the final result. But I just wanted you to know that like you don't have to do a whole lot with a smoky eye. It can be really subtle, just a, a nice soft eyeliner and then smoke it up, throw on some lashes. You're good to go. Thanks for watching. I know you all probably want to run off and get some Leslie Hampton pieces, but before you do, I want you to hit that subscribe button. Please love me. Hit the button, hit the button, like the button. Thanks for watching.